uh, great to have you over as always. And uh, you're quite right, a huge night of boxing this Saturday at the O2 Arena. Mike, just have some sound there, please. And uh, we can't wait. We have massive heavyweight uh, explosions. We have world championship fights. We have Rio gold medal uh, Olympic medalists in their first championship fights. We have rematches from 2017 fights of the year as well. And I'm delighted to welcome the entire cast up here today ahead of a huge night on Saturday. Before we go to these fighters, I'm going to pass over to the head of boxing at Sky Sports to say a few words, Adam Smith. Thanks, Eddie. It really is a cast, and it should be a fantastic night at the O2. Sold out O2 on Saturday night. I think there's something for everybody uh, on this card, and we're thrilled to be part of it, as always. Some real talent, some great matches. And the heavyweights uh, at the top table here, Derek Chisora, Carlos Takam, is, is a fascinating uh, and we, we hope a really exciting affair. Uh, terrific to have Carlos Takam back. He's, uh, he's been, uh, like Joseph Parker, really, they've been welcomed, really, as uh, uh, England has become uh, their sort of second homes. It's terrific. They're, uh, they're a great camp, both sides, the Parkers and the Takams, and uh, we're, we're delighted to have them back. But huge nights for, for Derek and, of course, for the man to my right, Dillian White, who uh, has really got, really got some momentum. He's gathering huge support here, and... Uh, it's a fantastic main event. But I think top to bottom, as Michael and Eddie have been saying, it's, uh, it's real value for money. It's, uh, it's a great night. I think everybody's going to go home having seen something special on the bill. Who'll steal it? Will it be the Conor Ben, Cedric Pano rematch? Will it be Joshua Boazzi? Will it be Katie Taylor, who uh, was sizzling out in Brooklyn when she unified her titles? Um, uh, I really think it's going to be a fabulous card, a fabulous night. And uh, enjoy all the build-up. The JD Ringside, Sky Sports News, everything coming your way. Uh, because it's a real treat, this summer one. Thanks, Adam. And before we get to the, the heavyweights at the top table, we're going to talk to some of the, the fighters on the championship undercard on Saturday night. Frank, first of all, welcome back. Obviously, disappointment for you at the O2 last time. You've gone away, worked hard with Don, and looking forward to making a statement on your, your comeback fight on Saturday. Yeah, without a doubt. I, um, I, was, I was so eager to get that, that unbeaten run of beating all British um, undefeated fighters to win the British outright and uh, yeah I was just I was probably too eager to had too much desire and um, I caught him early and walked onto a shot myself didn't recover um, but I've certainly it's a hard lesson learned and um, I'm feeling very strong every camp I've improved and uh, I'll be going out there to put on a clinical um, boxing performance. Anthony Fowler been faultless so far in, in your career as a professional an unbeaten, hungry Irishman coming to take your scalp on Saturday night and something that you're looking forward to getting your teeth into. Yeah, definitely. I've been saying today for a long time, like, I want a hard fight. I don't want to just go in and just dominate someone. So this lad's 8-0, got ambitions of his own. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I'm really improving now. Like, I've taught me games at the next level. I'm going to show on Saturday night that I am the real deal. I'm going to knock him out and um, I'm going to do it looking impressive. A big heavyweight match that was made only recently, but has got everyone's attention. I think you could call him a social media favourite, you can call him a crowd favourite, but Dave Allen is always ready to fight, always in the mix, and I know how disappointed and disgusted you were that you weren't the favourite going into this British heavyweight title <laughs> eliminator on Saturday night. Dave, um, I know you talk about your career, and this could be your last roll of the dice, but a big fight for you, nevertheless, on Saturday night, and a fight that you believe you can win against Nick Webb. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, Saturday, um, this fight, you know, I'm just, I really like uh, Chips. He's a nice guy, you know. Um, Thanks, Bowder. You're welcome. Um, yeah, Nick's a really nice man. Um, usually I'd sit up here and, and tell loads of jokes and, and do whatever, but he's a nice fella. And, and um, I've, I've been to this show a few times now, and, and, you know, it's all about Saturday night, I've realised, finally. From talking all the rubbish and then getting beat, I've realised, you know, it's better just to not do the talking and just do the fighting. So, so yeah, I, I expect a good fight. I think Nick's a good fighter. Um, but I think, I think experience will show. And I think, I think Nick can only fight one way. You can come, if, you, if you come and have a fight with me, you, you, you're you going to have a really hard night. So, hopefully, hopefully that's what he does and, and we, have a, we put a good show on. Obviously, when you look at your record and your career, you box Luis Ortiz, you box Dillian White, you box Tony Yoka. You know, you've been in at a very deep level. Do you see this as, as an easier task against Nick Webb? Yeah, you know, I boxed Dillian White and Luis Ortiz and Tony Yoka, and I, I did truly believe at the time of the fights I would win them. I, I took them all thinking I would win. Saturday night, um, this is probably my level. You know, me and Nick Webb, British title eliminator, this, this is my level. Um, 
am I as fit as I, as I could possibly be? No, but the thing with Nick Webb is, I'm not sure he's, he's that natural an athlete, um, <coughs> and I'll fight all day long. Uh, it's, it's a 10 round fight. He's got to fight for 10 rounds. Can he do that? I'm not sure, but I know for definite I can. So it'd be very interesting. I, I know he can punch, um, and, and, no, and nobody's indestructible, but I'm, I'm pretty near. I'm pretty, pretty near it. So it'll, it'll be interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. I, I keep looking at him. I keep catching him out of the corner of my eye. And I can't bring myself to say anything nasty about him. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just, I'm, just look, I'm just really looking forward to Saturday night, another, another massive night. And I'm, Massive thank you to yourself and Sky and, and, and mainly just to the, the British public that you know keep supporting me and, and, and keep helping me doing what I'm doing. Nick, a massive opportunity for you on Saturday. You were ready to go. You agreed terms and signed the contract to fight Joe Joyce. He decided not to fight you. Um, and now a big opportunity, British title eliminator, live on Sky Sports box office. Yeah, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. I'm very excited about this weekend and uh, doing the job. Obviously... Uh, Dave Allen shown his toughness over time. Do you think you can break him down and, and stop him inside the distance on Saturday? Yeah, we see. You know, I mean, you get in with your opponent and uh, you both never fought each other before. So I'm going to break him down like I normally break everyone else down and uh, we'll see what happens. Cedric Paynard, um, welcome. After one of the best fights I've ever seen live between you and Conor Ben last time out at the York Hall. This time it's for a title. WBA Continental welterweight title over 10 rounds and I know you're looking forward to the fight on Saturday night. Just a Go for it. Morning everyone. Uh, uh, sorry for my English. I would like to thank Ben Connors, promoter, its manager and his trainer for uh, agreeing to this rematch. Maybe you wouldn't have, you will also like to thank the audience for being there and asking for the rematch. I was a great fight and I didn't deserve to lose. I would also like to congratulate Ben Scottman for doing such a great job. Ben has a great team, so do it. I that's which, uh, what, no, why were they going to have another great fight? Thank you, everyone, and see you for the, what, for I'll the tell fight. Tell you what, what about that? <laughs> Connor, in French, please, if you uh, don't mind. <laughs> yeah. You could do it in Spanish, I know. Um, Connor, <coughs> this is a fight that you called on. Obviously, uh, last time out was incredible. I think both guys, you weren't 100%. Paynard <laughs> took the fight at about two weeks' notice, so he probably wasn't 100% either. But this is a one that you wanted, that you wanted to have back at the O2, you wanted to put right, or even though you won the fight. And I know you've trained so, so hard in this camp. Yeah, of course, mate. Listen, I fear nobody. You know, was I scared? When I got put down 100%, I was scared. But I ain't, I ain't worried now. I beat him on my worst day. I took his best shot, fresh one too, straight on the chin. And yeah, I took it. I took it well. I got back up and put him down in round five and round six. That was me at my worst, at my worst, absolute worst. I just got back from New York. I had a facial allergic reaction out there, severe one. I was jet lagged. I had Reebok shoots uh, that I had to commit to. And you know, no, no excuses. He called me flush on the chin with a brilliant shot. And I've never been so up for a fight in my life. I've never been so confident in my boxing ability. And, you know, I'm going to put out on display Saturday. I've been working hard in the gym. And, um, you know, I'm fighting for a title, but push the title aside. I just need to prove myself and prove that I'm absolutely levels above um, my opponent here. You know, he caught me good. And you know what? He should have really put his life and career on the line when he had me hurt. Because that's the only time I'm ever going to be put down like that from overlooking an opponent. Um, you know, so I'm up for it. I'm ready to uh, absolutely box. I'm barely going to get hit. Uh, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to show that I can box and not get hit, which I know I can do. I know I can do. No problem. I ain't worried. I ain't concerned. I ain't concerned at all. So I'm ready to have it Saturday night. I'm ready to entertain the British public at the O2. It's starting to feel like home here. Thank you. Thank you, Colin.
We've got, we've got ready to go. Ready to go. In French, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Joshua Boatsi, um, another good. first title uh, on Saturday night for you, obviously. Coming out of the Olympics, bronze medalist there and really moulding now into the professional game. We know you have a very tough fight on Saturday night. Your challenger sees this as his world title opportunity against you. I know you've had a great camp and ready to go on Saturday. Absolutely. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, like Eddie said, this is the guy's world title shot. So he's going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. There's not much talking to do. So um, Saturday night, I'll be ready. I've prepared myself. Um, I'm sure he's prepared as well. And let the fighting begin. Over 10 rounds, obviously, and the first time you've, you've done that distance. No turning back after this one. I know you get asked this question all the time, but you know, talk briefly about that light heavyweight scene. Obviously, you've got Frank Buglioni down there. Callum Johnson now challenging Baturbiev for the world title on October the 6th in Chicago. Great times for the, the division domestically and, of course, internationally. It is, absolutely. There's some real killers internationally. There's some real killers nationally as well. Um, so hopefully we'll all get on one day, put on a good show put on a good show for everyone, and um, the best man will win. Thanks, Joshua. The IBF and WBA World Women's Lightweight title on the line. Katie Taylor, who's boxed all over the world, looking fantastic every time, undefeated so far against her mandatory changer, Kimberly Connor. Kim, welcome. Um, it's great to see you looking great at the workout yesterday. A big opportunity for you on Saturday. Yeah, thank you for having me. Everybody's been really nice and... Uh, <coughs> This is, this is a whole new world for me over here. <coughs> Obviously, Katie's looked faultless so far in her career, expecting a very tough fight on Saturday, challenging for these world titles. Yes, yeah, she's uh, accomplished a lot in women's boxing, and I, I have a lot of respect for her. I'm not much of a smack talker or anything like that, so you're not going to get any negative out of me. I look forward to fighting her. I feel like this is the boxer's dream, uh, I'm the absolute underdog in this situation, and uh, she's got the titles, and I, I want to be able to to overcome and and take take home the belt. Katie, been a fantastic run for you. Obviously, last time out unifying the division in America, and back to the O2 where we saw you learning your professional trade. I know you're excited to to box again in London. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, this is, again is a great opportunity for me, and. Um, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life, the best form of my life. And I know that Kimberly's coming in as, as a hungry challenger as well. She's going to bring her best, and that, in effect, is going to bring out the best of me as well. So I can't wait for it. Thanks, Casey. We look forward to that unification. WBA, IBF, lightweight world championship on Saturday night. Now up to the big boys. I'm going to start with Del Boy, if you don't mind, Derek. Um, this is a fight that's got a lot of people's attention. We know you're always ready, and you always come to fight. Excited about putting it on the line at the O2 on Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> Are you expecting to win, Derek? Yeah. Who do you think is going to win the main event? <laughs> no, I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, you know this this card here is like what every fighter wants to be on. You know, um, <coughs> look at look at the room right now, packed with everybody: iPhones, laptops, cameras. You know, this is what fighters train to be when they go in the gym. They train to be on the podium like this for today, and then on Saturday, get in the ring and deliver what they want to. You know, under great undercard. <coughs> you know, Conor Ben. You know. Young warrior come up, coming up, you know. Um, you got the men from New Zealand up here versus versus uh, the uh, what's his name? Oh. <laughs> no joking. Listen, uh, what can I say? You know, um, it's a big fight for for everybody here. You know, uh, especially for Dylan White uh, and his team. Uh, you know. Uh, Joseph Parker lost his fight, his last fight, and uh, he's coming with vengeance. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great fight, to be honest with you, between these two guys. Uh, I know one is going to be looking for a power punch, one is going to try and box. So, uh, to all these guys, man, let the best man win. And uh, to my fight, uh, to my fight, we're going to go to war. That's it. That's what I can say. You know, um, I ain't going to hold nothing back. You know, uh, by the time I leave the ring, 
I want to be so tired that they have to carry me back to my changing room. Uh, I'm ready for this fight, uh, and that's it. Thank you, Derek. You've been a, a fabulous part of British boxing for a long time. We look forward to seeing you do your thing on Saturday night yeah. once again. Once again, Carlos Takam, welcome. Good to see you back on these shores. Um, obviously, last time for you, it didn't work out, but a big opportunity and a great fight against Chisora on Saturday night. I'm sorry, but I'm going to speak French, huh? <laughs> uh, this guy is going to make a translator. <coughs> bon, je suis très content de revenir ici boxer au Royaume-Uni. Et quand on m'a proposé ce combat, j'ai pas dit non, parce que je, je crois que d'aujourd'hui, uh, c'est ici que se passe la boxe. Uh, it I'm very glad to be back here in the UK. Last time was amazing for me, even though I lost. But um, when I was asked for this fight, I said yes with that, within a second, because I know the UK is where uh, So I'm really glad to be here. Thank you very much. We expect a great fight between Derek Chisora and Carlos Takan for the WBA Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. Now, on to the, the main event. Um, it's good to see my... Old friend here, David Higgins, I'm going to cut out one of his lines, which he told me early. He said, I like him because I make him, or he makes me look like less no, no, of a Higgins, twat, apparently. When I that act like a twat, it takes the heat off him. <laughs> exactly. But it is a pleasure to have you back here. We always do great business together. We love this fight. We made it in 48 hours. And a massive fight for the career of David Higgins, and particularly of Joseph Parker on Saturday night. I didn't mean to do that. First, first of all, I'm trying to be more observant and uh, present, and I've been looking around, and I find it quite fascinating that if you draw a line in the table here, all the bottles this way are made of plastic, and that way they're largely made of glass. <laughs> now, I think this is, I'm thinking this is a conspiracy, and I don't regard Dillian White as a sta mentally stable individual, so it's, you know, I'm a bit <laughs> concerned that there's all plastic this side and glass that side, but look, on, on a more serious... <laughs> On a, on a, look, he's, he's playing with his glass bottle. Anyway, on a serious note, um, I think I'm actually going to predict that this will be fight of the year, and uh, some people might um, ask why. And you know, there's a few simple reasons. People they ask what what is pay per view worthy. For me, a pay per view worthy fight has to hit the trifecta. The three things are one, it's got to be evenly matched, and I think everyone would agree this fight's fairly evenly matched. It could potentially go either way. Two, it can't be boring. It's got to be entertaining. And I think everyone would agree that the styles make fights, and Dillian's got a style that comes forward and swarms. He looks for knockout, takes risks, that creates opportunities. Parker, his, one of his regrets in analysing the Joshua performance was perhaps not putting quite as much pressure on or throwing the kitchen sink. This time he said he's going to show a lot more intent. This means it's going to be an explosion, I'd say. There could be a few knockdowns. Um, I think it will be fight of the year. And the third one is there has to be a lot at stake. These two guys' careers are on the line, largely. They're, there's everything at stake. I, I think, uh, I think um, Jonte Wilder will mess around, and if Joshua beats Povetkin, the winner of this fight is a sitter for a rematch against Joshua. And, uh, and so it's, you know, it's competitive, a lot at stake. And um, also, um, look, at allies in the... What are you doing? I'm giving you some Is you ready for you to stop talking and you take a breath? You can have so a few there you go. Um, I think the other... Then, then looking at um, the, the fight itself, I think Parker has a bit more on his plate than Dillian White. Dillian's only got to fight Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker has to fight Dillian and the officials. Oh. Now, why do I say that? Twice we've been to the UK... First time there's a controversy, this referee changed at the last thing? minute. Yeah. Second no. time, Eddie Hearn said that it, the referee, Joshua White, was a disgrace. No. And so we, Joseph's got to fight Dillian and the officials, but guess what? I think he's going to do it, and I think he's going to finish Dillian by knockout in the, in the mid round seven. You, you, you said last time that you, you, know, you believed that he'd win against Anthony Joshua. What's the difference this time? How do you rate... Dillian White, you took this fight very, very quickly. So obviously you see something where you feel like you're the big favourite going into this fight. I don't think Dillian's anywhere near as good as Anthony Joshua for a start. And I think his style of coming... He's, he got a, I mean, he's got an entertaining style, but that'll leave openings where... And if Joseph, I think Joseph, if he fights disciplined, if fights clever, has too much class for Dillian. And when that opening comes, hopefully we uh, get the stoppage. 
Thank you, David. We're going to move on to the training teams now. Kevin, welcome back. It was a pleasure to have you over for the last fight, and I know you've worked, again, diligently with Joseph in the lead-up to this camp. Sense excitement from you and Joseph in this fight, and I think you know what kind of fight it's going to be, and I think you're ready for that kind of fight on Saturday night. Well, thanks, Eddie, and it's, it's great to be here, um, and it's great the way we're treated by the British people. The, we've got a lot of fans here in the UK now, and it makes us really feel at home when we get here. In fact, the, I'll just tell a little story. We've, we've, we, we were approached the other day by a gentleman by the name of Josh Steffen, who owns Fly Gloves, and he rang me up and he says, <coughs> I'm a huge fan of Joseph Parker's. I'd like to meet with you. I know you guys fight in Black Rayers every time you fight. And I said, yeah, we've had 25 fights and we've fought in Rayers every time. He said, let me make a glove for you. And I thought, you know, are you for real? This is a, a British company, a British guy, and so we had a meeting with them, and we're now wearing flies for the first time on Saturday night. So, uh, right, well, the, they're getting the, sacked because Dylan wears flies as well. Yeah, but yeah, the right, that's their lot. Yeah. Are you here, fly? That's your lot. You're exactly. Out. There you go, Josh. Back to Grants and Rival, my friend. <laughs> Later. <laughs> we've had uh, we, we've had a short but uh, very productive camp. Um, we sort of felt like it was a bit of a set-up, even when we accepted the fight, that uh, Eddie wanted Joe to fly all the way over here from New Zealand 24 hours, stay in London one day, and then fly 10 hours to Vegas. So the first week in training camp, I had a zombie walking around who was seriously jet-lagged, which cut our training camp down to six weeks. Uh, the four weeks after that that we, that we put together in Vegas would be the best block of training in the last five and a half years that Joe and I have put together. Joe knows the significance of this fight. He knows what we're up against. We're up against a very dangerous, very powerful, very hungry Dillian White. We have a lot of respect for Dillian White and his team. So forget about what David Higgins said. There'll be no trash talking from me. Um, I know the guy has hunger. I know he wants to get to the top and he's got to come through Joseph Parker. So there's a lot of risk in this fight. But we've sparred 102 rounds in four weeks. We've never, ever done that. We arrived here in London with a lot of confidence. You can see my fighter beside me. He looks in great shape. There is something burning in Joseph Parker's belly at the moment, and he cannot wait to get into the ring with Dillian White on Saturday night. Kevin, just quickly, I know you won't give an exact prediction, but do you see this fight going 12 rounds? Look, I tell you what, I think this is a real boxing fans fight, um, as is, you know, Derek and Carlos. Um, uh, as hard as I look at this fight, the style that uh, Dillian White has, um, he would love nothing more than to fight Joseph Parker in a phone booth. You know, he's going to be in our face, and if he continues to be in our face, it's going to be a very, very hard fight for us to win. But look, <coughs> I think this fight ends by knockout. Um, I, don't, I don't see it going 12 rounds. Uh, the styles of both guys are going to make for a very explosive fight. There's going to be a lot of punches, and got, both guys are going to get hit a lot in the early rounds. Thanks, Kevin. Always a pleasure to have you here. Mark, um, been in some big fights with Dillian through your relationship with him. Doesn't get much bigger than this. And looking forward to Saturday night. Yeah, it's going to be a... It's de definitely going to be a, a rough, tough night for Joseph Parker indeed, for sure. Um, let's not forget Dillian's, you know, we, we respect uh, Joseph's pedigree and we know what he's done and where he's come from. But Dillian White is going to take Joseph Parker to a level he's never felt before. Depths he's never felt before. He was going to rough him and tough him. Um, Persistently and consistently articulate, you know, a bit cleverly, on point. Um, then we might put a bit of boxing in there, get behind a jab. But we're going to box fight our way to a victory. And it's going to be a, 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 a brutal victory. Same question to you that asked Kevin. Do you think this, this fight goes the distance? People talk about Joseph Parker's speed. And, and the ability of Dylan has to get in there, and like you say, to have a, a rough and tough fight. Does Dylan have to do that early in the fight? Well, Dillian's, Dillian's is, listen, to, 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 to boxing people, we know what, what this style's got to do to that style. And I'll be honest with you, um, Joseph Parker's team, I felt in his last fight, he made all the promises, what he was going to do, what he weren't going to do. 
He pulled the wool over the, he pulled the, wool over the fight fans of this country and he never delivered. He never delivered. I felt let down myself. And um, he, he, he is, he does, if he's looking for redemption, redemption, then let's hope he, he comes and brings it. But if he doesn't come and brings it, we'll walk him down and stalk him down and break him down persistently and consistently. We have to. We've got to eat. We've got to eat, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Joseph, you look great. I think you look better than you did even up to the Joshua fight. Slightly stronger you looked last night, just, just messing around in the, in the ring there. And something in your eye says, you want this, you're ready to go. Well, firstly, it's great to be back again. Um, great to see you all. And it's great to see you know, all the fighters fit, healthy and ready for, for fight night. Um, like my coach said, we're very thankful to the public and for the, the people for welcoming us and treating us nicely while we're here. Um, training camp has been great. Like Kevin mentioned, it was a short camp, but it was probably the best camp that we've had in the five to six years we've been together. So I'm in great shape. There's no excuses here. Um, <clears throat> before I used to come into fights and think, or I used to say, hopefully have a good fight, catch him clean, hopefully get a knockout. There's no hopefully here. Now I'm here to do damage. I'm here to you know, punch with bad intentions. You know, I'm going to break him down. I know I'm going to catch him flush. He's going to take a lot of punches. You know, some, you know, my, my opponent's been talking a lot of smack. And I think sometimes smack talk is a sign of doubt. And also it's a sign of trying to convince himself and convince others that he's ready for this big challenge. I hope he's ready to take a lot of punches because I'm going to give it real bad. Do you feel that as champion, there was always that element of pressure on you? You know, you come out of New Zealand, you had the belt to defend all the time. Now you, you seem to really have the challenges mentality going into this fight. I feel like I've got the challenge, challenges mentality, but the hunger, the motivation and drive, you know, it's, it's firing. I want to mix it up, not move. I know you're going to move. He thinks, he thinks I can't go to war. I'll wait and see. So it's not about speed and movement for Joseph Parker solely on Saturday. Less movement, more punches. Dillian? Hello. Less movement, more punches. Is that going to play into your style on Saturday night? Listen, this is boxing. People come and say they're going to do this, they're going to do that, they're going to do something else. I'm experienced now. I've been in the game for long enough to know that, you know, talk and actions is two different things. So let's see what he comes with, you know. Let's see. Whatever he comes with, I'll be ready for it. I've trained with a lot of lighter guys, fast guys. Strong guys, you know, um, so whatever he, he, wherever he wants it, I'll be there. You know, if he wants it long, rangy, if he wants it short, then, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm, I'm good. Uh, something that Mark said really touched down. You, you have to win on Saturday, don't you? You, yeah, both, you both have to win. Because if you don't win, it's over at yeah. the world level. Every single one of my facts is matchrooms has been like that anyway. But I'm going to keep saying it because you haven't been lost yet while you've been with us. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Listen, I'm here to win a You have to, to don't you? You, yeah, you, you want world titles. The of winner, course, the, losers, the losers got nowhere to go in terms of world championship fights after this fight on Saturday Yeah, night. yeah, listen, I, I come here to win. I've trained hard. You know, I give it my all. I look back at my camera and think, could I do anything better, anything more? And the answer is no. I'm ready to rock, man. I'm, I'm here, I'm ready to rock. Whatever they want, you know. Like Agent Burnish, I'm the can, man. If they want it, they can have it. <laughs> Finally, Joseph, predictions for Saturday night? <coughs> A win, dominant performance, execute the plan, get the knockout. Dillian, you see this going the distance? Can you stop Josie Parker on Saturday? It depends on where he comes. If he comes to fight, like he said, then he gets knocked out. But you know, if he comes to run, then I'll, and I've got to eat my way out to a point's decision. And so, you know me, I always try to bring the pain, and I always want to end these fights in bad fashion. You know, um, he's been here a couple of times, no one ever hurt him yet, so I want to be the first to, to hurt him. You know, the prediction is pain, pure pain. Thank you, Dillian. Thanks, everyone, for coming out today, and especially the guys on the card and also up here. We have Eddie, a huge yeah, night. One, two, one, two. One second. Sorry, uh, I think Eddie and this guy, you guys should have a bet, a 100-gram bet on your fighters. <laughs> you should shake on it right now. Come on. Yeah? Yeah. I don't have 100 grand. All right, it's 50 Gs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's just... It's 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 yeah, yeah, go on. We'll have a bet. You're taking it.
pay thirty percent a day. Um, yeah, have a buck. Come on, have a buck. Let, let's make it more interesting. Money, you do have a hundred grand. Well, where's the fame? Who would you? Who would you? No, where's the fame? I'm just asking. You, you, you tell me what you say. You don't understand the word he said. Have a hundred grand. Translator. Yeah. What's he say? Uh, you guys should have a bet. Make it more interesting. Am I lying? Yeah, he's taking twenty. Yeah, have a bet. Come on, have a wedge. I want to know who you'd be backing in this fight. <coughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a born again, I don't gamble, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, David, is it true that you're taking 35% of um, Parker's money? Just, just asking. These details are confidential. Let's have a bet, man. So get all that. Let's have a wedge on it quickly. Shake on it. <laughs> Eddie, don't go red now. You're giving him a big tour. Come on. I'm always ready. Don't worry. I'm have a bet. <laughs> Come on. 20 G's. 20 grand. Come on. Yeah, then shake on it then. Yeah, do you want to shake on it? Yeah. yeah. No problem. No problem. Do I get commission of that as well? Yes. <laughs> well, just to let you know, I'm going to lay it off I'll get for you to beat Takem, so don't let me down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, guys, thanks for coming. We're going to have head to heads up here, and we look forward to a massive night. It's sold out at the O2. Don't.